Hey guys and welcome to a new video here on Glow Shop. My name is Joseph. In today's video, I'm going to be retouching the image that I got from my natural light photography. If you haven't seen the behind the scenes of that shoot, I'm going to put a link or a card above. You can click on it and watch the video. But if you want to be a rebel and stay to the end, by all means, you're welcome. All right. So I want to say a very big thank you to everybody also who has subscribed or liked or commented or contributed to this channel in any way. And I want to tell you that the community is growing we're getting uh better and i'm also engaging i also make sure i reply to all my comments and so if you have any issues if you have any questions feel free to leave them in the comments down below and i definitely will respond to it all right so i'm not going to waste too much time i'm just going to go straight into the image so one more thing that i want you to know is i'm not using any other software apart from photoshop and camera raw well i'm, lo I'm looking at the images right now inside bridge but since we don't edit inside bridge i'm not really considering it as another software you can use i mean you can preview the images any way that you want the software that we're going to use to retouch that i'm gonna pay more at attention to and this is because sometimes i get comments that people past saying that hey um i can't get what you did because you use capture one i don't use capture one or i'm using focus software and i don't know what to do so this time at least once you're going to use photoshop you can do what i'm going to do inside of photoshop because photoshop comes with camera raw and camera raw it's just like lightroom so if you think you don't want to use camera raw and you want to use lightroom that's up to you but yeah um yeah stick and stay and then let's see what we're going to do so what i'm going to do is i'm going to right click and open with photoshop so all the images are going to load inside of camera raw first because the images are raw they open inside camera raw for you to process them and then it's going to open up inside of photoshop yeah so what i'm going to do first of all is look at the images so one two three four and five i noticed that these two images are quite similar and the last two are similar i'm saying they're similar in terms of the location it's the same location but in terms of where i shot them they have certain similarities and even the lighting also looks quite similar and so when i'm editing i'm gonna group those and then edit them as such so i'm gonna start off with these two so i'm gonna select this one hit shift and click on the other one and now i have both of them selected so whatever adjustment i do onto the first one automatically is going to sync onto the one below it and so you can notice and so you notice that all of them have been over exposed right now so i'm going to hit default and take the settings back to where they were i do want you to know that whatever i do on the top one is going to affect the lower one so what i'm going to do now is just going to increase the exposure a little bit because looking at my histogram it's pushed a little bit more towards the left and so i know it's slightly underexposed i know you'd say I shouldn't use exposure, I can use shadows and all that, but I'm combining all those settings just to make sure I push the image to the level that I want it to be at. Alright, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to open the shadows up a little bit like so, just to expose her face and let her be a little bit more visible. I'm going to go into the blacks and also open that up just a little bit like so. What I'm going to do next is just pull down the highlights a little bit to bring back some details in the dress. What I'm going to do next is just push a little bit of the haze because it adds some form of contrast and saturation. I'm going to add like plus one clarity and I'm going to go to plus four on the vibrance. So when I hit P on my keyboard, there's the before and there's the after. Before and after. So all that I'm doing is affecting the layer right below it or the picture right below it. So after this tab, um, sometimes what I do is after I'm done adjusting the things I need, I can play with the temperature a little bit. So either I want to warm it up like so, or I want to cool it down like so. And cooling it makes it look quite decent. But what I want to do is rather play with certain color profiles that are inside of camera roll. Now I'm using 10.3. So if you don't have this, you really have to update yours. It's there, but it wasn't made into a preview like this where you have set, um, like presets in your favorites and st stuff like that. So I'm going to go into Adobe Raw and just hover my mouse into monochrome and you have this monochrome option if you have selected all but if you're in color then the monochrome goes away so when you hover your mouse you're gonna see what that preset looks like neutral portrait adobe standard and adobe vivid so i think i kind of like the adobe landscape as opposed to neutral but i'm just gonna stick with adobe color for now okay I'm going to go into camera matching and check out camera faithful, camera landscape, camera neutral, camera portrait, and camera standard. I think I like the effects of camera standard. So before camera standard, after camera standard, after, yeah. So I'm going to click on camera standard and close this tab up. So what I'm going to do next is 
um, yeah basically close this and hit P for preview so this is before and this is after I think I like where the image is right now so I'm gonna go into the next step the next step is my tone curve and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna increase the highlights a little bit like so increase the lights just a little bit and the darkness maybe open it up a little bit as well so what I'm trying to do here is flatten the image as much as possible but I'll add contrast later inside of Photoshop itself maybe just go down on the shadows to minus six all right so inside sharpening I don't want to do any sharpening here so I'm gonna pull everything down the noise reduction is already down I'm gonna pull the color down as well and it automatically takes away the um, the detail and the smoothness so I'm gonna go inside of the HSL adjustments tab and I'm gonna start with the hue so we know obviously there are reds and yellows and oranges and a bit of greens inside the image and so those are the slides I'm gonna push around so with the hue should I add a bit more um, orange should I turn the reds into orange or should I turn the orange into red so basically that's what the slider does and so I'm just gonna add a bit more of a orangish tone to it so maybe plus three is fine I'm gonna go down to orange and should I make them a bit more red should I make them a bit more yellow I think I'm not gonna touch this one even if I will maybe I just go to minus two so now to the yellows which area is it affecting it's affecting more of the maze farm right so adding this makes it a bit more green and it doesn't look too nice I'm gonna go into the reds a little bit too much and it's going to be, look overdone so maybe I'm also gonna come down to like minus four so I'm gonna hit P for preview so before and after before and after all right, I'm gonna come down to greens and I'm gonna slide this and you, you notice it's changing the color of the greens around here. So I'm just gonna pull the greens down and make them a, a little bit more of a reddish tone. Now the sky is gonna be in the blues. So here is, it's, okay, so here is moving more towards teal, but I don't know if I want that so much. So I'm rather going to make it a little bit more of a purple color and I'm gonna come down into the purples and make those look a little bit more blue so in case you're not seeing it this is the before and after so here it's making it more purple here is making it a bit more blue so I'm just gonna pull it down to let's say minus 20 so here's a preview of what I've done all right so there I'm gonna move on to saturation now I'm gonna saturate the reds just a little bit like plus five saturate the orange just a little bit as well saturate the yellows as well maybe desaturate the greens I'm going to go into the blues and saturate them a little bit as well. So here's a before and after, before and after. I feel the red in here is a bit too much. So I'm going to go, I think it should be in the orange or no, it should be in the red. Sorry. So I'm going to pull the reds. Yeah. It's her skin as well. So maybe plus two before and after. I think I kind of like where it's at. Okay. So I'm going to go into luminance and reds. Should I make them brighter? darker brighter I think brighter works well I'm gonna brighten the orange as well All right yeah I'm just gonna brighten the orange as well I'm going to go into the blues and yeah let me brighten it ever so slightly like so all right so I'm gonna go into split toning and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna do anything here because I can do the coloring inside of Photoshop itself I'm gonna go into lens correction and I'm gonna en enable um, profile corrections, but I'm gonna bring my vignette back a little bit like Somewhere around here is great. I'm gonna also click on remove chromatic aberration Click on the one below and do a preview just to be sure so this is a before and after so all the adjustments I made on the above layer it's affected this one accordingly, but this looks a little bit brighter so I'm just gonna go back here and gonna go to exposure and maybe add a little bit more exposure come down to this and I'm going to go into my HSL and pull down I rather pull down the reds a little bit it feels a bit too strong in this one so somewhere here works great okay come down to these two are quite similar but they are different in exposure so I'm gonna bring the exposure of this one up just a little bit like so just to match this before I start blending them so the first thing I'm gonna do is go into my lens enable lens profile corrections still bring in my vignette go back to the basic tab increase the exposure a little bit like so bring my highlights down 
open up my shadows increase blacks clarity plus two dehaze plus two vibrance goes up just a little bit like so all right gonna hit done so I'm gonna hit command 8 select all the images and hit done now clicking done is going to um, apply the adjustments that we made inside camera raw and put them all here for us to see the adjustments that we've made and now I'm gonna pick one that I'm gonna retouch so I'm gonna look at them maybe one after the other so this or that or this or that or this and since i love the sky so much i think i'm gonna retouch this image in particular I think I'm going to retouch these two images. Yeah, I'll just try and work on these two images and see. So I'm going to right click, open with Photoshop. I'm still going to open inside the camera roll one more time. I'm just going to hit Command A and press Open Images. So now it's going to load inside of Photoshop. All right, so now we have these two images opened inside of Photoshop. What I'm going to do is, first of all, I know this image is going to go on Instagram. So I'm going to hit C for my crop tool. And I already have a preset um, for um, my Instagram crop. And, and, and so I'm going to start. I'm going to hit enter here. Even though this isn't the frame I'm looking for, I'm going to go to the next image. The crop is still going to be there. And I'm going to hit enter. So now that I have... Um, crop the images the way I want. The next thing I'm going to do is hit command T on the picture and now I can drag it to the frame or the, the way I want the crop to be like and I think somewhere about here works great for me. I'm going to check it and this becomes my new crop. I'm going to go back to the next one and also I'm going to hit command T and now should I just make a fix show? Should I make more of the sky show? I think this gives more of a dramatic look to it. But I'm just gonna try and balance it out to about this point. So right here works. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of the folds. So somewhere here works great for me. So I'm gonna check it. So this is before the crop and after the crop. Before and after. I kinda like it. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to zoom into her face and um, just heal a few of the blemish areas on her skin. So I'm going to create a new layer, hit J for my healing brush tool and sample the good areas and paint over where the blemishes are. She doesn't really have a lot of blemishes and remember this isn't um, so much of a beauty shoot and so we don't really need to spend so much time getting rid of. Um, all the blemishes because they will not even be seen that much so yeah I don't spend too much time um, trying to get the, all the blemishes removed properly just like that Just gonna heal these areas once I'm here, just like so. Maybe get rid of this particular armpit line. Um, get rid of this vein here, and get rid of this. Get rid of that. Get rid of this, and there's nothing else for me to work on. Maybe just gonna get rid of this line. Get rid of that line. 
Get rid of this neckline as well. And get rid of that. Okay, now zooming in, I can see this right here. So I'm gonna go to my clone stamp tool and just sample and get rid of this from here. Alright, so I'm just trying to clean up the dress a little bit. Just like that. So before and after, before and after, just tracing out the dress a little bit. Also, once we can see the full plant here, I think we should, we should just get rid of these that are showing through. So just like that. It's a few clicks. I'm using my clone stamp tool to get rid of them. All right. So I think I like where we are now. I'm just going to go into liquify and just add a little bit more shape to the dress. So I'm going to hit shift option command in E to merge everything I've done. Go to filter, come down to liquify wait for liquify to open up and first of all I'm gonna work on the hair maybe just add a little bit more volume to the hair and push these areas down like so push this out push this in and push this out just like that all right Let's push this Great. All right. I'm purchasing just a little bit like that. And just trying to add more volume right here. Okay, so I'm just gonna hit OK. And this is a before and after. Just a little change before and after, but it makes so much of a difference. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is run my um, dodge and burn action. So I'm gonna, I'm not gonna do frequency separation on this because I don't really need to spend so much time on the skin. All right, so doing that, I'm just gonna even out. I'm gonna do two levels of this. So first of all, I'm gonna start with about five percent flow make sure my brush is white and i'm just gonna even out all the two and all differences like that if you're not seeing anything i'm just gonna do it before a quick before and after so you can see what i'm getting rid of all right so just add that all the patchy areas on her face i'm just gonna use this dodge and burn technique to get rid of them pretty quickly so it's not always that i do um, frequency separation I only do it when it's I only do it when it's necessary in this case it's not really 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 necessary because she has good skin I don't even think we did make up for this particular shoot I don't think we did all right just like that anywhere that's a bit patchy trying to even out okay we're almost done awesome right there all right so the before and after, before and after. I'm gonna go to my burn, and once I'm here, I'm just gonna burn 
again on a micro level what i feel needs to be burned to further enhance or further create a smooth tonal transition on her skin okay so this works great So before and after, just gonna zoom out a little bit. Before and after, before and after. I feel it's a bit too strong, so it's gonna pull down the opacity to about 50 or 60% before and after. And I kinda like where it's at. What I'm gonna do next is create another Dodger and Band. So I'm gonna run the action one more time. But this time I don't really care too much about the black and white layer, so I'm gonna hide that. Go to my Dodge tool and I'm gonna Dodge her forehead now I'm contouring so I'm dodging the forehead anywhere that needs like light I'm gonna put that there dodge her chin her neck dodge right here dodge this all the way down dodge it here as well dodge right here and right there come down to burn and then I'm gonna darken down any area that needs to be darkened down so now we're adding shape and form to the image. Awesome. Okay. Great. So we have a before and after. Before and after. And adds more. It makes it look more 3D-ish. So I'm going to go down on the opacity one more time. So I'm going to hit Alt. Click on the very on the layer 0. And do a before and after before and after you can tell it's made her pop out a bit more so i'm just going to go down um, on this dodge and bend just a little bit more and even on the first one i'm still going to go down some more like so so here's a before and after all right i kind of like where this image is at so what i'm going to do next is i still feel i want the blues to pop out a bit more so i'm going to click on my hue saturation and click on this target tool click on the blues and now I'm gonna add some saturation to that. And here's a before and after. You can tell we've increased the saturation of the blues. Okay, now all I need to do now is just add some contrast and color tone the image the way I want and we are done. So I'm gonna go onto my curves and just gonna pull the shadows in like so. And I'm gonna bring the highlights out just to add some contrast. All right, so here's a before and after the contrast that I did. I'm really liking it. Okay, so now to color grid, I'm gonna go into selective color. I'm going to go into my blacks, which is gonna target the colors in my shadows. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of warmth and I'm gonna make it look a little bit more purplish. So adding red and adding a bit of, or taking away the yellow puts in a bit of a purple-ish tone so I'm just gonna do that a little bit like that then I'm gonna go into my neutrals and I want to make that one a little bit more yellowish so I'm gonna add a bit of red going to the yellows and I'm going to increase the amount of yellows um, in the skin or maybe yeah maybe I'm just gonna yeah let me just add maybe plus one Going to magenta, should we add green? Should we add magenta? I think adding magenta works really well for this. So plus one is just about fine. So here's a before and after, before and after. All right, I'm gonna go into the highlights itself and I'm gonna cool down the highlights. So I'm gonna add um, some cyan to the highlights and I'm gonna take away the yellows in the highlights, which is going to add more of a blue tint to it. So somewhere around, so. And this works great. So um that's the color tone that we're going for maybe i'm just gonna add a gradient map to it so click on the gradient map look at the options i have maybe i want to go more towards a tone like this so blue in the shadows warm in the highlights or i can even reverse them if i want but primarily these tones work great so i'm gonna change it to first of all multiply to see what it does it adds more contrast i don't like it go to soft light to see what i want to do still don't like this one i'm gonna go down to color color works great it's gonna pull down the opacity 
all the way to about 90% together before and after. Or I can reverse and increase the opacity like so. I, I really, really like what it's done. So I'm just going to keep it at maybe 10% together before and after. Maybe increase it some more. 20% before and after, before and after. Let me come down to 15. So I'm in between 10 and 20. Great. I really, really like where this image is at. I, I'm really, really, really in love with it. So I'm going to zoom in towards the eyes. I'm going to hit curves and I'm just going to brighten up the eyes like so. I'm going to hit command I. I'm going to hit B for my brush to paint with white. And I'm just going to paint over the eyes, increase my flow and paint over the eyes like so, paint over the eyes, zoom out a little bit and bring the opacity down to a point where it fits just right in. So before and after, just a little bit of pop to the eyes. All right. I'm really, 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 really liking what I've done so far. So yeah, the next step and the last step is to add noise. So I'm going to go into my actions. I have a noise action. I'm going to click noise, press play and it's added some noise to the image so here's the before and after and i really really like where the image is so i'm gonna hit command s which is going to save it's gonna bring up my save dialog box and i'm just gonna keep this as a tiff file so that i have access to my layers so i'm gonna make sure my layers is checked and i'm gonna hit save and press ok so i'm gonna keep this right here because there's certain elements i'm gonna pick and move on to my um, the other layer that I'm going to edit. So I'm going to open that right about now. And what I'm going to do is over here, I don't really think we need to even do so much. I'm just, I just opened this because I want you to know that you don't, you know, sometimes it's just about the story, you know, looking at the image, there's a mood to it. You don't really need, looking at the picture, there's a mood to it. You don't really need to do so much, right? So I'm not really going to do much um to this particular image all i'm gonna do is make a duplicate go to filter come down to liquefy and what i'm gonna do is just liquefy her arm ever so slightly so i'm just gonna push this in like so push this out just a little bit like that straighten the arm a little bit just not anything too scary maybe reduce the size of that just like that and also push these in just a little bit like that to make it a little bit smaller so here's a preview so before and after before and after all right i'm gonna hit okay okay before before i hit okay let me just add a bit more volume to her hair one more time so just all around like that awesome and i'm gonna hit okay so this is a before and after and I kind of like the way she's looking in the frame now. So I to and I'm going to even out her skin tone. Already she's a bit far in the scene. So with my normal brush and a very low flow, I'm just going to even out her skin tone with the, with my brush tool. So I'm just going to sample and then I'm going to paint just to even out her skin tone. And I'm not even going to zoom in and do a very good job because again, this picture is going on Instagram. It's not going to be printed. And so I just need to even out at the level that I know people would be looking at the image anyway. So yeah, um, that kind of works. Perfect. Reduce the opacity to about 50% before and after. I kind of like it. I'm going to go to my um, Dodge and Burn, press play. And what I'm going to do is for this, maybe I'm just going to zoom in because I'm going to do two levels. Hit B for my brush tool and quickly paint with white, even out some tonal transitions like so. Just like that. Okay. Just going to come down here. Great. 
much works. Alright, I'm still just dodging the areas that need dodging. I'm gonna go to burn and now I can burn inside the areas that need burning as well. Okay. This is not really the burning or the dodging burn for contouring, but I just want to add a bit of it to the image once I'm here and once I can do that. Great. Alright, so I'm gonna get rid of the black and white adjustment. So here's a little before and after. You can tell we've made um, quite a change to the image. Alright, so I'm gonna run the action again, my my dodge and burn. I'm gonna get rid of the black and white, go straight to dodge, hit B for my brush tool, and now I'm going to overdo the areas that I want to dodge. So I'm gonna dodge right here, dodge her nose, like so, dodge right there, dodge chin, shoulder, dodge your arm right here, and dodge this area. Do the same thing, dodge here, and even dodge like certain pockets or certain parts of the hair. Just gonna dodge them like that. Perfect. I'm gonna go into burn. See the before and after of the dodge, right? So burn. I'm gonna burn any area that needs like some shadow. I'm just gonna burn those areas, just like that. So inside the hair also I'm just gonna burn the areas that need some burning just like that all right right there it's great okay so before and after before and after I'm just gonna pull the opacity down to about 50% before and after add a bit more shape to where okay so so far here's a before and after of the image i really really like it i am just going to go to the one i've already edited i kind of like the feel so i'm going to pick the things i need from here and move it to that particular layer so just in case you want to know this layer is or this picture is mg5705 and i'm now on 5783 so i know i like the noise I know I like the gradient map, select color, I like the curves, and I like the hue saturation. So these are the ones I like, and these are the ones I want to transfer onto my other layer. So I'm gonna hit Control on Mac, or right click if you're using Windows, and I'm going to duplicate layers. Now I'm gonna hit Document and select the 5705 file. So I'm gonna click that and press OK. Now when I come there, you notice I have all the layers transferred onto this particular one so when i put them in one group and do a before and after this is how it looks and this image if it's together with this they look like they're in the same set and that was what i was aiming for so yeah um i really really like the coloring and the finishing of this image it took me just a few seconds and i've been able to transfer that look from that image to this one and i really really like it so yeah so yeah, if you enjoyed this video, kindly give it a like as this helps us create more content. Click the subscribe button if you haven't already, because subscribing is free and it helps me a ton. Also hit the like button if you enjoyed the video, as it tells me you're interested in my content. Turn on post notifications to be notified of my new videos to keep this community alive, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye everyone.